I'm Jamie, I'm the Associate Director on Straight Like Crazy. And what has led me to this point in my career? A series of strange opportunities and meetings which eventually culminated in having a meeting with Nick where we just ended up talking about Robert Moses for a significant part of it. And realising that this fascinating, curious, strange man that not a lot of Londoners necessarily know about is an incredibly interesting figure in 20th century history, particularly influencing how all of us live on a daily basis in cities. So I've known about Rob Moses for a couple of years. Um, my friend who is a transport consultant kind of recommended the amazing biography about Robert Moses called The Power Broker on the level of saying, this is just a great book. It's an incredible study of power. It's an incredible study of how a man can go down the wrong path if he overcommits to a single idea. And so I devoured it a couple of years ago. And then when I saw this was announced, I was like, this is exciting that someone is eventually trying to tackle an enormous life. And I think something the play does brilliantly is it doesn't try and capture everything. It just focuses on two very specific incidences as being reflective of what his life was and how this man who started in one place very much finished somewhere else. Um, but it, you know, it misses out so much because there's only a fraction you can possibly do in two and a bit hours of stage time. So one of the first things we did was watch a couple of fantastic documentaries which just gave us a really clear feeling of the context of the times. Uh, yet that only goes so far because the big thing that Nick's been talking about is he doesn't want to try and do a documentary on stage because there's lots of brilliant documentaries about Jane Jacobs, about Robert Moses already and so it's really about drilling into these two moments um, in his history and trying to understand the psychology of that man and how he can be so committed to doing the right thing uh, at the start of his career and yet trying to use the same approaches, um, chasing the same idea 30 years later suddenly can turn him into more of a monster in the eyes of the people who used to once love you. The thing that is most interesting about this story is actually the human side of it and about how we can all think we're certain about certain things, we can all believe that we know the way the world is, but actually if we don't allow our views to change then we can get stuck in a wrong way and start making bad decisions and things that we thought were once brilliant are actually the opposite of what the world needs right now. So that's where I think the most human, interesting and accessible point of Robert Moses is, is that he was someone who started off with the best plans and he really wanted to do it for the people and yet by the end of his career he's reviled because he's behaved in a sort of tyrannical way and lost the love of those who once adored him. It's been really exciting, it's a really sort of infused, keen room where everyone is so committed and thrilled by the story that we're telling together that actually it makes for a sort of very happy environment. So even though the story itself is about something quite serious, about cityscaping and the way we live our lives, the atmosphere around that is all filled of you know, delightful investigation more than anything else. There is an element of succession because it's about how power works and how people operate and how things get done. There's an element of something like Amadeus, where you've got two figures who are opposed to one another and it's about their differing ideas about how things could be done. Um, there's a streak of Aaron Sorkin kind of peeking behind the curtain of the political world. So I suppose those are the sort of three 